Good morning. I am here at the mosque with Bibi Barami, a good friend and a community leader, to learn more about the role that this faith community plays in Muncie. We're on the north side of Muncie, and it's May 16th of 2017, and I'm Nikki Lunsford, working on the Middletown Research Project, finding out what the churches are doing with the economic changes in Muncie. So my first question, after saying thank you for being here today, Bibi, is tell me about your faith journey. Were you even born in America? Tell me about your faith journey. Uh, good morning to you, Nikki. It's very nice to see you this morning, and thank you for reaching out. Uh, my faith journey, I was blessed to be born as a Muslim in a village in Afghanistan, and uh, that was the only faith that I knew in my life in that little village that I lived, is a middle-class family. And until I traveled to the United States and got into school and educated myself, I learned about other faiths ah. and other cultures, and I became myself as I always dream of when I was living in a little village in Afghanistan. Wonderful. And my journey with the faith has started from my childhood. Why, how old were you when you came here? I was 19 when I came to the United States. And did you State. know any English? No, I did not. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. So, so did, what kind of school did you go to when you came here? I started with a private teacher. My husband got a teacher for me oh. to just start from ABCs. And once I got caught up with ABCs like a little child, with the yes. pictures, with the ABCs and cups and saucers in the house, then I attended a career center. Okay. They had adult uh, English classes and also for the GED classes for the high school uh, diploma. And I continued with that, taking classes while having a birth to a child or getting pregnancy and caring for my extended family. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took me four children and eight years before I got my GED completed. Congratulations. That's Thank a you. lot of work and a lot of obstacles to overcome in that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Was your husband, Cyber, already here? Yes, he was. And yeah. Because you were He's from an the arranged one marriage, right? Yes, yes. We got engaged in the refugee camp, actually. We were really? living in the refugee camp together uh, when the Soviet invaded Afghanistan. Oh. He was volunteering in the refugee camp. I was volunteering in the refugee camp. We got engaged. It was arranged by our parents before he came to United States because he was put in jail when Soviet invaded Afghanistan. He was a medical student and he lost all his document as a resident. He had to oh. redo his residency in the United States. In order for him to come to United States, he had to, he had American family in Sedalia, Missouri. When he was exchange student from his high school, he oh. told them if he can apply for him to come back and do his residency in the United States because he lost everything. Amazing. He came here right after our engagement, then I followed him five years later. He applied for me to come. Are engagements generally that long or was that predicated by the school? It was mainly because he could not find a residency and he was oh. waiting. He was like, if he cannot find it, he will come back. That's why he was waiting for once he gets a residency, then he will apply for me. Then he got a residency and then he applied for me. Sometimes I tease him, I say, it took you that long to really, that you really <laughs> wanted me or not, but uh, yes. <laughs> I think he did. Yeah. So how did, what, what is your position in the mosque now in, in, the, in the church? I'm the community coordinator. So what is your responsibilities point? for that? I usually pretty much uh, take care of coordinate community activities, volunteerism, whether it's a Muslim community and extend it to a bigger, larger community mm -hmm. and get people involved, bring speakers in and organize dinner, the monthly dinner that we do. Uh, second Saturday of each month, we have a social slash ritual dinner that we all bring a dish and we eat dinner together. We share our meal and then we pray. Nice. Is and that then, here? That's here in the Islamic Center, yes. Very good. So. Can you explain to me the hierarchy of your, what I would say was a pastoral staff? You mentioned that you do not have a full-time pastor, mm -hmm. but how does that work? How does your 
Yeah, as a small community, we, did not, we don't have those many members to really afford to have a full-time minister and uh, then a community leader and they have taken responsibility as my husband for the last uh, 35 years he has been in this community and I think Dr. Ali, Masum Ali, who was the professor at Ball State, distinguished professor, he has founded the Islamic Center with some other students uh, from Saudi Arabia and some other members. Mm -hmm. Yes, one of the founders that uh, he started the center. But for the last 35 years, my husband has been involved. I have been involved for the last 30 years. And in any position that we can, he was president for over nine years, the three terms that he did. I started kind of adding to that. We have executive board, we have bylaw. And they didn't have any woman voices. And years ago, that was my first intro, like to start having a woman representative position in the committee, in the executive committee. Then uh, I was the woman representative for many years. And now we changed by law because women can run for any position, for community coordinator, for president, for vice president, treasurer, secretary, any of those positions. I said, why only the representative of women? We, sh we should be running for this position. We mm -hmm. changed bylaw recently again. I was on the bylaw committee for that too, okay. to make a difference. All right. So how long has this um, Islam Center been, not this building, but this community of faith, how long has it been in existence? So Cyber's been in there for 35 years. How long ago? I think we started in 1969. Okay. Yes. All right. The history. I kind of have a brief history written by Dr. Masum Ali, and I will give you a copy of that too. All right. So where did it? Where did it begin? Because you've only been in this building what, maybe nine years? Yes. We had a small church on Ball Avenue, 1717 mm -hmm. Ball Avenue. Mm -hmm. The students and Dr. Masum Ali and some other members of the community bought that that building. It was a church. Uh -huh. And they, they were praying it, using it as a mosque for many, many years when I first came to this country, we were using that. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh, it was, uh, then we kind of gave it as a donation. Oh. So how do you see your um, membership? A lot of churches right now are declining. Some are growing. What is, what's happening here? Is the membership growing, declining? Is, the, is this community struggling to stay alive? Uh, I think after many years, we were good for many, many years, and recently it has been declining. I think some of our um, member has uh, passed away, some of them moved mm -hmm. away, some have retired, and some uh, moved to actually Fisher, because a bigger community, bigger Muslim mm -hmm. community, they have much, much better opportunity. I think they were, there is a Muslim school for children in Indianapolis. Yes. And that's the reason we are kind of shrinking right at this point. So are you, are, are, are there not Muslims, young families coming into the community? They're going to Fishers? Or are they just not here? I think that most of them who were here and some of them moved, there were some of the doctors, they work in the hospital, but they live in Fishers. But it's because of their children and the community that was that's offering mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. But we try to, as much as you know that I love Muncie, I try to recruit people from all directions and right. say the positive things that right. we can offer in this small community. And, uh, but still, we're kind of, this is recently we've been struggling with uh, mm -hmm. the membership. Okay. But we're still good. Good. Well, okay, mm -hmm. so aside from the membership, what are the key challenges facing? The key challenges will be mainly in the community. I think people interest are changing and people are maybe another reason. I know some members have told me they don't come to Islamic Center because they're afraid that something may happen to some of the special events and uh, unfortunately. I think unfortunately. that's one of the factors even that we're struggling with. Even in the university, the Muslim Student Association, we have never been this week for many, many years. But recently, p students do not want to be part of that, mm. unfortunately, because they don't want to associate, they don't want to be uh, in trouble because this is a Muslim Student Association. Unfortunately, because of the media, because of what the new order has been, I think people are afraid. Mm -hmm. I see these two challenges, the attendance 
and participation are coming from that that's getting lower and people have moved away. I think these are the two factors that's affecting us. And the challenge is that to really voice our truth, the peacefulness of the religion, mm -hmm. to educate people, mm -hmm. instead of doing that, people are going the opposite way and kind of staying in their shell. Mm -hmm. And since they're afraid, uh, the fear makes it harder for us. Mm -hmm. And I just find very few people who are really trying their best to reach out to the community, to educate people, and to let them know what the true, the truth of the faith is, mm -hmm. which is peace. As a, my president, we were talking that other day, I said peace should be, Islam should be the head of the peace. Why should we participate in the peace, Paul? We should be, the, we should be heading it because Islam means peace. Mm -hmm. As a Muslim, we should be heading that in the world. But unfortunately, we are behind, you know. We have a lot of work to do. You need a marketing department? I'm working <laughs> in, I'm working <laughs> in the, well, in the last I'm, few decades, yeah, in Muncie, it's, ex we've had so much change, economic and social, and, and you have been in the middle of that for the last 30 years. Our big companies have left with their philanthropy yes. and their leaders. Um, what ways have those changes impacted your faith community? I think the economic is, uh, as I say, like because of some of the work in economic has been affected. I know one of the Berg Warner left, and I think the Muncie economy was kind of down. And I think that was one of my uh, struggle not with the Muslim community, with the community in large, with the mm -hmm. hospital, the recruiting us. You know, I would try to say positive right. things to bring more people, and we had struggle with the Meridian to bring psychiatrists, and and I try to work. Uh, uh, for the positive on those, I think mm -hmm. economic was a big thing too. And some people are struggling, like my family is here. I have uh, three brothers who lived here. One of my brother had to go move to Columbus, Ohio. And as you know, as much as I love Muncie and I don't want my kids and my family to go away from it, right. but he had to because of the job. He needed a and job. And my other brother who has finished uh, Ivy Tech and he's looking for a job for the last two years, he hasn't found one. Mm. Uh, that just maybe the job opportunities also and economic stability has mm -hmm. to do with the two that we're struggling with. And mm -hmm. how about you have several children? I and have, they, uh, have they come back? Most of yeah. them are out of school. Two graduated this weekend, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I'm blessed with my children. One of my wish was at least that my children come back and uh, practice in Muncie community mm -hmm. as my husband did it for the last 35 years. And that one wish came true when my older son came back from medical school from Chicago and yes. he is a res second year resident now. Good. And he's practicing in the local community as I'm very happy and I'm trying to keep him here, like mm -hmm. we ent entertaining the idea when he finishes residency that he will practice here. And that there is more, almost 99% that he will stay here. We're very excited. Yeah. So that's a spark my of youth. My grandchildren, yes. Yeah, in the, in the mm -hmm. Islam Center. Yeah, my second boy is in Milwaukee doing internal medicine, and I told him, you have to, when you finish residency, you have to come this way. If not here, but at least in Indiana, in yeah. Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> so have members of your church community had their lives changed by the economic problems? Uh, several of them probably did, because as I mentioned, uh, several families that they could not find a job here, or they were struggling with the smaller Muslim community, that their children might be facing some difficulties, they moved away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did mm -hmm. have some family that were affected by the economic, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. How's your faith community involved in the economic and social life of the community? And we could even depart that, put it in two different ways. Let's first look at the economic how, how does this faith community get involved in the economic life of the community? Uh, I feel uh, we are all here to make a difference in our community. We all have a job. We contribute. Mm -hmm. I have to contribute a lot to uh, buy shopping constantly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my husband thinks that, you know, Muncie economy is, uh, is more better because of BB shopping. <laughs> I, my, I'm very uh, conservative shopper too anyway. I buy things for mm -hmm. others and I'm blessed to, to be able to do that. But I think uh, by working and contributing in our co community, mm -hmm. most of us are professional. We have a lot of professors from Ball State that works in the university, made a huge impact here 
and we have a lot of Muslim doctors. Yes. They contribute to our community, and as I say, my husband for over 35 years, mm -hmm. I see patients that don't have to necessarily have an insurance or this or that. He just take care of that. That's the like contribution economically mm -hmm. instead of these patients suffering, going to the hospital and getting worse. And then we have, we pay a big we do. dollar for it. And we try to take care of them as much. Even we see patients sometime in the house. If you have to just to avoid that and whether they have insurance or they don't, we will call the medication for them. A lot of the doctors are serving above self mm -hmm. to make a difference economically and also the patient health that we have a lot of professions Muslim here. Mm -hmm. How about the social mm -hmm. changes? The social That's changes been pretty dramatic have over been, the 30 yeah, years. Yeah, the social is be, we've been blessed with some community members. We reach out to different um, volunteerism in our community. Uh, like for example, uh, we did uh, volunteer for soup kitchen, the lunches for some poor people. We Harvest Soup Kitchen, we went to volunteer mm -hmm. to pack the food for the people. We help with the Unity Center, you know, I'm a board member mm -hmm. there, and we provided like uh, computers for the students there. Okay. I think we donated over $4,000 to uh, mm -hmm. give, help them with that. And uh, socially, just like mainly we are connected to have better edu education opportunity and understanding, and that's I think is my big part of the mm -hmm. my life to make a better understanding. That's my contribution. Not only just uh, entertaining and inviting people to my house constantly. Constantly. Yeah, <laughs> I even have guests tonight. I just every week I have invited some of the community member try to uh, enjoy them. Also, they are my dear friends. I love all of them, but just to have better understanding and if, in case if they have any question that I can address those the time that I have with them. So you're just trying to break down walls. Yeah, that's my biggest, that's my commitment and that's mm -hmm. my mission. Mm -hmm. As long as I live, I try to break those, yes, mm -hmm. to have that understanding. So you've mentioned a couple of programs that your church has worked mm -hmm. with. Do you have some other specific examples of programs that your church has initiated to respond to the community's economic dislocation? You mentioned the soup kitchen. Yes. What are some other kinds of things that you do for the... I think we did a... We did a program here at the mosque about the race group. Oh. We reach out to them, they reach out to us, we sponsor their meetings here several times. Okay. And we did a program for the green, what is that? Uh, the Greenway? The Greenway, Greenway or the, to go green, you know, like we oh, had an event okay. here yes, for yes, that, yes, yes, to yes. go green for the mm -hmm, men's seat. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do volunteer at the Motivator Minds oh. every year. We have a table, the Islamic Center. Mm -hmm. We try to support those groups. And with the university, we have volunteers. We always like support the, especially the hosting of mm -hmm. the students that they bring from the international department. Mm -hmm. Dr. Holland, who was the head of that, and recently I think that program is ending. Hmm. And we reach out to the university with those different levels of volunteering our time and hosting some of the students in our house as a community member. We have done that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish we could do more, but nothing else that we have done something bigger, but we should be. Do you have anything in the pipeline for additional programs, new things that are gonna, you're going to start? Uh, to be honest, not really, mm -hmm. because we're just forming the new executive committee. Oh. And our election is in the end of May, and we just accepted our new bylaw, as I told you, that we're gonna be more members involved. We're mm -hmm. bringing some young people in the leadership. Good. We have a Sunday school, actually, that I involve uh, my daughter in La Sohila, and then a couple other members are heading that for the Sunday school. They're offering these children with a beautiful program. I think that, that we are trying to involve the younger people to do better for us. As I always say, that the younger generation is our better half. Mm -hmm. That they will do much better. The traditional people have come, they have their own comfort zone. It's hard mm -hmm. for them to reach out. And I'm constantly struggling to make them come out of their comfort zone yeah. and make a difference. Those mm -hmm. people, 
I try for last three years uh, and uh, <laughs> I just have better hope for my younger generation <laughs> that they will be the better community member for all of us and make a difference. Positive way that's, to look at it. Yeah. So you mentioned to me, can you tell me the story about your current president? Oh, my current president, uh, he is a student still at Boston State University, Rick McKinney. And uh, he had, uh, he was a military uh, from, uh, he went to Afghanistan, Iraq, and other countries for many years. And he had a lot of hate toward the Muslim. And I think he has done a lot of damage while he was uh, in the military in Afghanistan and Iraq. And he regrets that now because his story has changed. And, and he lives in Muncie, Indiana. And several times he was uh, attempting to really hurt us here at the mosque. And the one time he came and uh, he was welcomed by the members. And whatever reason, he came for a different reason, but God put the thought in his mind that he came in and then he was welcomed by the members and the, how the peacefulness, the warm welcome that he got. And he said, oh, let me think. And then uh, he had, uh, my niece was in one of her, he has a, one daughter in the, his class. And the girls, uh, the, her, his daughter comes home that, oh, she's a Muslim, she's such a good, good, good girl, and I love her. And then he went and met her too, so, oh, there's something God is telling me. And then he's not only was heading Muslim, now he's uh, converted to Islam, and he's our spokesperson for the community. And how he became the president, he was the MSA Student Association president, and when our president resigned, and our bylaws say automatically he could become the president. And mm -hmm. just right away, like one after another, he became the president of Islamic Center. And we were all so happy uh, to have him and we're blessed for the opportunity to work with him. It's an exciting story. Mm -hmm. Do you work with other churches or organizations uh, mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We are very mm -hmm. close connected with the Unitarian Universalist Church, okay. with First Presbyterian Church, and with the um, Methodist Church and Friends Memorial Church has okay. been uh, all along in our life, and we are very much like connected with them mm -hmm. and supportive to each other. And yeah. how about working on community programs? Do you do anything together with them? Uh, that's uh, actually this coming Sunday is my annual interfaith event. Every year we started that, Dr. Annie Eliadis and I started that uh, seven, eight years ago. And Anne Eliadis is in the Jewish faith community, yes, is she she's not? In so that's an important she, um, linkage that you have. Yeah, we both started because of the Muslim and the Jewish tension in the Palestine and unfortunate things that are happening everywhere. And we started as a Jewish and Muslim get together interfaith in the beginning. And we extended ah. that to the rest of the community. I said, why not Christian or other brothers and mm -hmm. sisters? And now I'm organizing, I have a priest from the African American community who is gonna be speaking. Oh, and from the Christian uh, and from the uh, Unitarian church and from the Muslim and from the Jewish temple. We have all these uh, speakers for five minutes and they talk about respect Mm. is the topic. We change topic every year, and that's how we're very connected with our community. And I always suggest uh, when I go to the Academy for Community Leadership, every year I'm on the panel with them, with different religious oh. group, mm -hmm. and I suggest that we should be having regular meeting every six months to really, we have responsibility mm -hmm. as a religious leaders. We also have responsibility to make a difference in our community. What is our obligation? Mm -hmm. to you know educate our people who comes and the one who does the one who come is a blessing but the one who don't come what do we do about those mm -hmm. to help them because most of our problems unfortunately is uh, we kind of have left our origin and values and religion and that's why we're suffering in mm -hmm. the world we want to come so. back to our creator and truly give the love and understanding to each other mm -hmm. that we'll be in a better place we would. Yeah. So what role, if any, do you see for churches and faith communities in cultivating a sense of citizenship among your members? Citizenship, um, you know, do you... Um, like uh, 
like gender and children no, and No, more like are just like going out the, into the community and being, um, you mentioned that um, many of, everybody's working in the community. Uh -huh. What other sorts of citizenship? Um, oh yeah, the, that we're involved. Yeah. I think one of the biggest thing, like uh, as a Muslim, we have a huge responsibility to our community. But how much we do it, that's a different story. Like, uh, for example, for a, if your neighbor is like hungry and you're sleeping full stomach, mm -hmm. you're not uh, now like considered as a Muslim, yeah, unless you need to know about your neighbors, what's going on with their life. And citizenship is also respecting your community members mm -hmm. and making a difference, reaching out when they're sick. You go visit, you send them food. I think that kind of comes with the respecting mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. other members. That mm -hmm. comes in the citizenship too as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? I it's think like you also, I, I know that you're a part of uh, Rotary and other yes. mm -hmm. community organizations mm -hmm. to help in other ways than just your faith. You work on... So maybe that's where oh, I want to go. The citizenship. The citizenship is yeah. how. What are you doing um, to get involved in your in your church, getting involved into <laughs> Muncie to make it grow and prosper in other ways than just faith? Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's why. Like sometimes I say that, uh, like you know, we as a Muslim we pray five times a day, but that's right. God doesn't need our prayers. He need the reason we pray to be a better citizen mm -hmm. in our community to reach out, to be comforting each other, to help each other, to make a difference in our mm -hmm. local community. Mm -hmm. As I always say, my kids that uh, I've been blessed with six children, like each child, if you raise a good child, a good citizen, wherever they are, they make a difference. They contribute to that. It's like a fruit from the tree, the society benefits from it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my mission that we should be all doing that to the society benefit from our action. Mm -hmm. As I know, I'm a Rotarian, uh, and I'm also on my neighborhood board, and I just strongly believe in those citizenship mm -hmm. and making a difference in my, making a light in my community. There you go, mm -hmm. all right. So is there anything else that you wish to add? We've covered most of my questions. Uh -huh. I would just like to say that, um, to tell all my fellow citizen, my brothers and sisters in Muncie community, with the university, with the city of Muncie, our dear uh, mayor, and uh, from all aspects, from the, all the religious leaders, I think we are truly blessed in Muncie community as a Muslim living here, as a citizen living here, as a human being living here. And I always tell people that we need more of this kind of leadership to have such a welcome community mm -hmm. to work together and make it a better place for all of us. And I want Muncie to be a sample to the whole United States, and that's my mission. Very and well. I really thank you for the opportunity, and that's, this is what kind of clarifies it, mm -hmm. that Muncie will be a sample because you guys are here in the Islamic Center. I welcome you here, and thank you so much for reaching out. It's an honor to be here. Thank, thank you. you for thank all you that you do for the community and the people that are around you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate it.